So today we're speaking with activist and multi-instrumentalist Xavier Run at the Nokia Theater Times Square. Uh, it's part of DecentX.com's Artist Flip series. Hello, Xavier. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Uh, you're touring right now in support of your latest studio album, which mm -hmm. is uh, Darker Shades of Blue. Um, that was released on August 19th. How are you enjoying the tour so far? It's been great. It's um, it's nice to come back to the States. Last time we were here was winter, so it's nice to come in the summer. Yeah. And, uh, Even though it's a rainy day. A rainy day in New York, which I guess doesn't matter. New York sort of, you know, I guess it's not the place where I'm walking around in the park. So you don't uh, you don't get a chance to kind of like go around and enjoy the city at all. Yeah, we do. Um, my wife and I got a, 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 a Korean vegetarian place. Um, that it's one of our favorite restaurants in the world. So we're gonna we're gonna go there. Hi. So New York, I think, has its little special mm -hmm. things for everyone. Um, I guess in terms of the kind of person I am, it's it's. Uh, it's the opposite to what I dig, but it, um, but you're more of a laid back kind of. Well, I just you know I grew up in the in the bush and on the coast, and you know I like those places, and I am um, I'm not I'm not a big one for cities, but I think New York has a vibe and an energy that you know people talk about, and I guess you you can't really know what that is until you experience it yourself, but it has it has a, it has a uh, a quality that's that's pretty cool, and, and I think everyone that comes here finds something special about it. And I certainly have, you know. It's certainly a life being mm. on the road mm. and going from city to city. Yeah. Do you do a lot of your writing on the road, or do yeah, you find more inspiration of, when you're home? Uh, probably more when I'm home. But for Dark Shades of Blue, I wrote a lot of that album on the road, and um, you know we were traveling a lot for the last two years, and um, and so you know a lot of that stuff came from working on the road and with my drummer Dave Tolley. Um, yeah, so. Uh, no, Darker Shades of Blue was the first album that, in a while, that you recorded in Australia, where you're from. Mm -hmm. Is there, uh, do you find that it makes a difference to the pers overall persona of the album? Uh, yeah, it does. Uh, for one thing, I was missing home a lot. When I recorded this album, we'd been away a lot, so it was nice for me to be home. Um, you know, it's a beautiful place, the, the place that we uh, that we recorded, and you know, I was able to sleep under the stars with my dog by the fire, um, looking up at the, the stars that I looked up as a child, and, and it was just a nice reflection to be home, you know, um, in the mornings at the beach, and... By the time we recorded in the afternoon, I think I was pumped, you know, and I think that you can hear that vibe in the album. Also, the instruments, I use a lot of Australian timbers, you know, so the humidity um, reacted well with the wood, and I can hear it like it's a warmer, thicker tone coming from the instruments. Well, it's a great album, I must yeah. say. Uh, when I first listened to it, I popped it in, and Blackwater came on. I seriously thought that I was listening to a Hendrix song. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's, I don't think I'm worthy of that. <laughs> I appreciate it, but... <laughs> do, you, wow. do you find uh, Jimi Hendrix is, is somebody who musically inspires you? How could anyone say that Hendrix wouldn't be an inspiration <laughs> as a musician to listen to? I don't care who you are and what music you listen to, that guy, or something else, like he... He, uh, he puzzles me. I was listen it's funny you asked me this because I was listening to him uh, on the plane just yesterday. And uh, I was reflecting on his age yesterday. You know, I was he died when he was 27. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm 30 now. And I think that what he achieved at 27, the music he created, the sounds that he made um, you know, before his time, the, 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 the songs, the riffs, the just the the trippy things that he got out of his guitar with the equipment in those days is it was, it's just mind-blowing it's unbelievable but you can definitely see a resemblance in, in that with a lot of the things that you do with your own guitar well yeah I mean I have my own unique style of playing and I taught myself to play and I use you know a lot of slide guitars and different instruments and I do everything from sound um, it's all sound based rather than theory based you know like half the time I don't even know what notes I'm playing I'm just kind of just playing f by ear so um, I think Hendrix was a bit like that so maybe uh, yeah maybe there's a there's some kind of thing but I, I'm not even worthy to even go there and, and well, you know, I appreciate you saying that but <laughs> 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 speaking, 
speaking of your instruments, you have quite an involved and very impressive musical setup, instrument setup, when you play live. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me some of the, uh, the setup that you actually have? What's in there? Well, I use um, lots of slide guitars, different guitars, all, all handmade instruments, just about. Um, I have Yidakis on the stand, which is didgeridoos, and I play them the same time as guitar. Um, so it's an Aboriginal Australian instrument, you circular breathe to play it. I have percussion all around me that I use as well. While playing the Yidaki, I have um, pedals on my feet, my guitar pedals, and a stomp box that I keep rhythm with, um, Aztec drum that my grandfather made me, uh, various things. I sort of lost track of what I just said, but I play <laughs> bass with my thumb, melodies with my fingers on my guitar, so I, I split my guitars and I send them to a bass amp and guitar amps plus the acoustic line, so I, I, I make a lot of sound that way. I do all my bass lines myself. A lot of people think I've got bass lines playing when I play music. They and you do it all yourself? Like a bass track, but I'm doing it with my thumb. Man. Wow. That just sounds bassy. Just listening to you explain that is physically <laughs> exhausting. <laughs> I mean, how exhausted are you at the end of a show? Yeah, I'm pretty depleted, but I like that feeling, you know? I like that that feeling of being depleted because I have a lot of musical creativity and energy and um, and I kind of needed to plead it, you know. I think if I don't, I drive people nuts. Just ask my wife about that. <laughs> so I think it's important to uh, for me to to let that go. And and, um, and yeah, I like that physical. I'm a pretty physical person, so I think I like that that um, using my whole body to create the sound. Kind of like I'm dancing, you know. All my limbs limbs are moving, and um, I'm breathing circular breathing, I'm letting it all go and I'm kind of lost in the trance of it. So I don't have any time to really think about um, anything but what I'm doing, you know. It's just... Now when you record, do you record in the same way? You play all the instruments mm -hmm. at the same time? Mm -hmm. It's not individually done? No, no, we play it all together, we do it all live. Like Dark Shades of Blues, Dave and I, we can, two of us can replicate that, the drum, two of us can replicate that. Um, uh, pretty much exactly how it is on the record. There's a few things, I, a few guitar solos and things I overdubbed, but for the most part we can play all that live. When you were actually in New York City last time, uh, was right here in Nokia, and I came to the show, and they were handing out these postcards, and it was a picture of you playing on stage with Dave Matthews. Oh, really? It was great. Yeah. <laughs> I have it actually on my dash, my car. Yeah. Um, were you a fan of Dave Matthews yeah. before you played with him? Totally. Dave Matthews fans great. Very small in Australia, so I remember I had some friends at school that were really into Dave Matthews, and Dave Matthews was, um, uh, I wasn't as a hardcore fan, but definitely appreciated everything they did, um, and their, their following in Australia was really cult and really small, most people didn't know who they are, mm -hmm. still even, um, wow. compared to the US. Yeah. So, um, yeah, to, to play with them was a trip, you know, and, uh, and such an honor to such great musicians, like, you know, it's incredible. You um, definitely have a high energy show every single time. It's so high energy. Do you, do you um, play off of the crowd's energy? Oh, I mean, totally, totally. I feel when I play, it's not really me entertaining a bunch of people. I feel like it's more, almost like a celebration of good energy. Um, <clears throat> it's like a circular motion, you know, of, um, of all these people bringing all their good stuff. I have really good people coming to my shows. I'm really lucky that way. People letting go all their good stuff, you know. Mm. It's going out and it's floating around and it's coming up through me and I'm channeling it all and it's coming back out and it's like this big, it's almost like some kind of church, you know, it's this big <laughs> thing. And I'm just a, a lucky one. Definitely can be a spiritual to. experience, <laughs> that's for sure. It is for me. And I'm sort of the lucky one that kind of gets to channel that energy, but I feel like we're all kind of equal, you know, in the room. Everyone's just doing, I'm just doing the same thing mm. as everyone else, just sort of letting go what I need to let go. Now, do you have a, 